cannot go without a mention. No. Um, obviously, yes. the uh, 52nd of which was was the most crucial, but um, all of them were hard working. And obviously there was a couple more after the big tackle. Mm. I remember one on another set that Warrington had in attacking position um, that he was on, in with someone else, but it was a really tough hit that stopped the momentum of an attack, slowed it down at that stage. Matty Russell for Warrington, a try, 158 metres for him. Stefan Ratchford, 224 metres, obviously got kicked to an awful lot yeah. um, in that. Chris Hill, 194 metres. Daryl Clark with a try assist, 46 tackles, 198 metres. Phenomenal. That, I mean, you yeah. know, his numbers stack up against... The other hookers, don't they? 46 tackles was, was is a number that hasn't been mentioned a lot yeah. for Daryl Clark. Um, well done to all the players involved in, in serving up a, a thrilling final with a great end. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant game of rugby league, wasn't it? Right, we've obviously got a ton of fan feedback. Which I'm going to suggest well. that, we, uh, that, we sh- that we share the load on this one a little bit. So all it's right. not just, a, uh, not just, the, just me reading stuff out. So I'll, uh, I'll take it to a certain point and then, uh, and then tag you in if I may. Uh, Chris Macy got in touch. He said, what a game. It had pretty much everything. Hard hits, quick counters, uh, monumental brain farts and even Ben Failer once. I thought wires, pace and dummy running was going to take its toll on what, like, what looked like a tiring pack but hold it brilliantly to come back. Game of inches and big Kicks both successful and otherwise. Gidley looked like he was nervous when he missed those kicks, uh, like a pikey at a spelling test. Chris's words, not mine. Uh, Bruiser664, our friend Sean, he said, was a bit disappointed during the first half. Uh, I found it a bit dull and thought it was going to be another year of a whole team being nilled. However, the way they reacted to the Warrington miss penalty and the subsequent knock-on made me realise that they might just have enough in them to win. Glad to see them eke it out in the end. And that tackle from Houghton was incredible. Uh, Wilco2205 going to a fantastic game for the neutral exactly what a final should be either team could have won it looking forward to the rematch at Old Trafford interesting do you think we'll see it as a rematch at Old Trafford Mark? I hope not you hope I'm not I'm going to say you hope not I'm going to be consistent think. with that message yeah. <laughs> yeah but what do you think though? no I don't I don't think don't I don't think, think we will I think Hull have Obviously, a very different group of players in a very different time, but they nosedived after the cup final win in 2005. 2005. Warrington have also shown a tendency to drop off after cup final wins. Um, But, you know, we've not seen this group have a cup final loss, but maybe if they drop off in the same sort of way, then that'll be a problem for them too. Um, So maybe it's more optimistic, maybe it's more false optimism, but I kind of hope my Wigan boys will. I saw that out, and obviously Saints have been playing so d- doggedly yes. in the last in the last stages of the season. So let's see, see how we do. Just Davies ninety got in touch. Uh, what an engrossing and aspiring contest I'm guessing um, which benefit, which befitted the occasion congratulations to Hull FC on their gutsy comeback and winning me some dollars I think just Davies fell victim of autocorrect for a second there uh, Paul O'Brien 1976 a great game in out until the final hooter. Great win for Hull. The hospitality was great as well, b- despite being sat with wire fans. Yeah, Paul won himself a bit of a competition on this. Did you see that? Yeah, you mentioned it last week, actually. Yeah, yeah. well, there you go. So it turned out I was right. Yeah. yeah but he was posting for and I was thoroughly, thoroughly jealous. Uh, wire Joe said, a great final. Curry should have snatched it at the end, and when Gidley went off, we were left rudderless. But in truth, we should have had the game won. We created chances, but as often has been the case this year, we lack the clinical edge to convert them. Uh, but congratulations to Hull, worthy winners after the way they've been playing this year. See you in Manchester in October. Yeah. Aidan Stalker got in touch uh, didn't think much of the first half as both sides were a bit too cautious the Matty Russell try opened the game up nicely Daryl Clark was the difference between the sides until the Fenua try when Hull finally believed they could win good for Ben Curry as he's a fabulous player but it sums up wire nearly men delighted for Hull a club that sorry, a club like that should be winning far more often Ellis has had an amazing year so far Tom Ackley 99 got in touch. He's also a Warrington fan. He said, being that close to winning but not quite making it is the closest I've come to crying since the death of Hodor. Uh, Still, best match I've watched in a long time. Mr. Illingworth. 
No over mistake, over Rich Langley. Yeah, so, you get uh, to the bottom of the page, mate, and then I'll jump in. We'll get a, uh, a whole fan perspective, which is great. Radders is the dadders. Yeah, mate, you know, 17 heroes. Tears, cheers, beers. Beating second, third, fourth, and fifth in the league to win the cup. Ending the hoodoo. Monkey off our backs. Roll on Saints on Friday. Though how can we top that? I'm going to be hungover for a week. Good stuff. Lee Whitnell, um, Warrington fan, utterly devastated by the result and felt totally deflated all the way home. Having slept on it, I feel very proud of our boys who just came up short in a game of f- very fine margins. I'm sure it was a fantastic game to watch for the neutral and a great advert for our amazing game. I'm proud to have been there. Mm-hmm. Um, Alfie Garner at Alfie Wolf, got in touch. That's how I like my RL. First, congrats, Hull. Second, well done, ref. Third, gutted for wire, but so pleased it turned out to be one of the great finals. How and take a bloody bow. What an effort stopping Curry in the last minutes. In such a finely balanced game, losing Gids was a bridge over Hull too far. John Hamilton. Two good deeds for the day. Took three RL virgins to the game and rescued a lost Hull FC fan about to go the wrong way on the Metropolitan line. Great day out and a cracking end to the match. I thought the Wyatt were going to run away with it, but Hull pulled it out of the bag. Missed goals and Gidley going off probably the difference in the end. Well done, Hull, though. Uh, The Hodge. This is what we want to be shown on primetime BBC as an example of Rugby League. What a great game and what an amazing Wembley atmosphere with the fans from all teams in the league everywhere. Days out this are why... I love Rugby League. P.S. Sneed. <laughs> Cutthroat Jake. What a great cup final. A distinct improvement by certain players on their previous cup final. Hull deserved it for their team belief and ethos. Even though Warrington struggled with Gidley's loss, I think Hull had shown enough to deserve the result. Okay, Rich Wilkinson got in touch. He said, it was a tough game. Uh, what were conditions like? Was it humid? It seemed humid. Yeah, apparently it was humid. Um, I would know it was humid because the BBC didn't mention how... I wouldn't know how humid it was because the BBC didn't mention how humid it was. Um, I'm not really sure. I think it might have been humid, though. Uh, but I reckon... Um, yeah, I hear the temperatures were not high, but the humidity was... 60%, so really, 60% humidity really drove, drove, I don't even know if that's drove right. the conditions yeah. there you go, um, humid uh, Gidley lost uh, wire the game with some really poor goal kicking but they looked devoid of ideas after he went off apart from the 40-20 Sandow didn't do enough in a big game like that either uh, Clark was outstanding and how matched him, the players looked knackered it might have been humid and Paul Michael Craig got in touch. He said, good game, not a great game, featuring some rocks and diamonds kicking from Sneed. Sh- oh, it's a bit unfair. That's <laughs> a bit harsh. It wasn't all... Yeah, I can, I can think of, like, two fairly poor kicks early in the piece. There was a lot of kicks where he gave Warrington's back three space to return. If you look at the, the meterage stats, mm. compared to the clean breaks that came out of those players in the back three, um, you would see that they made a lot of ground without making many breaks, which right. shows that those players were being kicked to get in the ball and run in. Yeah. But then the for me, that's when more, it was absolutely... That says more the about the line speed of Warren and the fact they were getting to him and putting him under pressure with his kicks rather than it being, you know, rocks and diamonds. I think it was as good as he could do under the circumstances for my money. Um, Shaw's chase and Houghton's tackle proof Hall wanted it more... Uh, despite Wire being the better side for most of the game. Uh, a little bit disappointed with the crowd. Is it time to switch finals, i.e. the grand final at Wembley and the cup final in the Heartlands? That's an interesting question. I no. don't think so, to be honest. I like the Wembley day out yeah. and you have the grand final up in Manchester. Well, to me as well, it's it's like that big date in the rugby league calendar. Um, I think what they should be doing is finding ways to sell cup finals to more fans you know people like us who mm. you know we've been to finals as neutrals but not necessarily as much as yeah. maybe we, we could have done if it was sort of sold to us better um, I always struggle with why I always struggle with is with the idea of going to finals or buying tickets for finals is my team realistically have a shot of getting to every single final yeah and that means I want to sit with my fans, so I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to have the, have the hassle and stress of trying to get rid of some tickets after I've yeah, already. And that, them. that idea just stresses me out. <laughs> Fair enough. And I said to only get the finals that your team are in, so well, yeah. I'm happy enough to uh, to toddle along with you on that one. <laughs> I can see you've got some notes there, Mark. No, that? no, they were they were to talk about during the. They were from before. We've already covered all. We've already things. covered that yeah. off, but but. You know, to round it off, one of the best finals that we've seen for a few years, I would say. And and like they said on in commentary on the BBC, finally we've got that classic final app 
the new Wembley, haven't we? Well, I, I sort of think the 2011 final was pretty special. It yeah. had, it had, you know, incredible tries. It had. Was that the Joel Tompkins? Try? Yeah, yeah, that was a great. Try. And it had like the great game. A yeah. game sort of up in the air for a period until Wigan scored, you know, a mm. couple of late tries. The mm. was it the the moss up to Lima one. That's, is the one that sticks out. The one, to be honest, I was pretty hammered that day. The one I remember is, is Joel Thomas. Oh, obviously, yeah, yeah. But we were, uh, we were all pretty done for. Okay, so that's the Challenge Cup final then, put to bed. All we've got to look forward to now is the is the running to the grand final, I suppose. Which is exciting times. Yeah. There you go. Right. Um, Hold on, no. <laughs> Just one more point about... Go for it. The crowd. Um, apparently, the numbers in, that they announced include the Club Wembley. Yeah, I'm... Was, Glad you brought this up. Barely, barely occupied, which is a disappointment. I hope that people who have Club Wembley tickets have some obligation to attend a certain amount of things. Yeah, but they'll not, choose not the, the fairy ball, won't they? Yeah. Because no. as a society, we, we value that higher for some reason. I wonder if there's a way of improving attendance or improving the visual of it if the RFL or if whoever runs Wembley can find out in advance... Whether people are going or not, and fill those tend seats to use up their with tickets, box, yeah. and, you know, sell them on, or take them, or give them to school kids, yeah, or, or give take them, them to in. people who've been nominated for awards or whatever exactly. in the in the in, you know in the community game and stuff. Yeah. Um, the the whole end looked to have fans all up, and we know Scoots was in the top tier, and I like sitting in the top tier at Wembley. Yeah, to be honest, great it's not a bad seat in the house great that place. View at Wembley, isn't it? But the Warrington end did seem a lot bearer, didn't it? Especially in the top tier. Mm. So I don't know if that, that, that was that. If it was a one, one, you know, one side had filled it a bit more than the other. Yeah, but I don't think it's indicative of like a downturn or anything like that. Look, seventy six thousand people going to watch a rugby league match two hundred and fifty miles away from home is a, is a big. I think thing. it's probably more like sixty five, sixty eight thousand. Even so, still, that's almost what you'll get at old. That's pretty much what you'll get at old. Oh, of course, and I don't feel like October. the atmosphere was lacking. Not at all. As a result, it was, no. no, absolutely, absolutely not. Right, may I? Yeah, to be honest, I only threw that one in too. I know, I know. I'm, I expect you to do it at the end of every segment this week. Right, let's take a look now at some results from elsewhere in the world of rugby league. <laughs> okay, so Championship Shield then. Um, I think most of these games have been played today, Bank Holiday. They were all so played congratulations. today, yeah. Well done to you for marshalling those getting, into the rundown. It was getting these games in this mm. weekend so that the you know champion the challenge the shield final can roll in a week before mm-hmm. the grand final so in terms of how the fixtures will pan out so that it doesn't distract anyone from more important yeah. events because but that would have been a worry wouldn't yeah. it yeah it would have distracted me right okay <clears throat> so championship shield then it was whitehaven 10 halifax 30 uh jewsbury 26 bradford 36 a result that means bradford can't finish any lower than first so guarantee themselves a home semi-final uh oldham were defeated at home 24 points to 54 by the sheffield eagles and swinton beat workington 19 points to 12 mark yeah um Facts that win was their first win in forever mm-hmm. that confirmed them in the top two as yes. well. Um, so home semi final for them as well. Uh, Swinton and Oldham they still have a worse points difference than Town, but but both the Cumbrian clubs now are faced with having to win the final three games to stand a chance really of of staying up. Workington obviously have the better chance with that better points difference, yeah. um, whereas. Whitehaven are still giving away about 50 points or so on the other two teams Not looking good. Um, that they could theoretically catch. Um, so it's yeah, it's starting to look... Well, this Bleach. time next week we might be talking about the uh, the end of Championship representation from Cumbria. Well, you'll keep your fingers crossed for Barrow then at that point, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. OK, uh, there was one League One Super 8 fixture this weekend. It was down in London, obviously changed to coincide with the Challenge Cup uh, and London scholars were defeated 14 points to 58 by two win into the it was um, right. Toulouse are going to have like they're going to host the promotion playoff yeah. game now um, I, I assume that means the first chance and the second chance yeah um, game I think so so but they'll probably go up on the first chance let's face it um, yeah is it the is it the it's the stadium, the New River Stadium, or something like that. Oh, I don't know. Is that what the the London Scholars play at? Shall we? Because you know what, we've had, a, had had conversations about this recently. Yeah, and I'm still convinced they play behind that office block. 
They, well, they don't. No, I don't. Um, so. <laughs> so well, you.